a question, and I hope you know the answer to this. Is the scope as presented in this log frame, and it actually is not specific to this log frame, but any log frame, comprehensive and detailed enough to be used for project implementation? Yes, it is comprehensive and detailed, or no, it's not comprehensive and detailed enough. The answer is no. It's definitely not comprehensive because the log frame often does not contain the indirect work that's required to complete the project. That The proposal where the log frame is contained is often focusing up on the products and services as well as the higher level results and impacts that are sought after in the project. Here is an example of a graphical format of a WBS for filling a job vacancy and I just am showing you this to re give you another example. So the project is to fill a vacant post and then the comprehensive categories are the job, the candidate, and the selection. And then under the job you have the need, job specifications. Under the candidate you have attracting the candidate, shortlisting the candidate, and then the selection includes the interview and post selection. And under each one of this next level category uh, you'll have several uh, more details. The need would include budget, options, approval, job specifications would include the job timing and the person. Attracting the candidate would be uh, advertisement, uh, the content and the location. Uh, shortlisting the position, the criteria, reviewing the uh, CVs or job applications and then shortlisting. The interview then uh, would involve getting a venue, having the interview, a tour, deciding on the candidates that are preferred, and then the selection process would be terms induction and relocation. So that's just an example of a WBS. Here are some of the suggestions that I'll give you, uh, throw out to you for making a good WBS. I think it's extremely important to have participation involving the people who will implement the task because they know best what is involved in each task and how these can be decomposed into manageable subtasks. And remember, that's why doing the WBS during the detailed planning phase is extremely important because those staff that will be doing the implementing may not have been hired or uh, on the job at the time that the identification and design or proposal were written. Um, secondly, I think it's often useful to use something like sticky notes uh, or pieces of paper um, to write down the various uh, work packages and tasks and subtasks and to put those onto a wall or a whiteboard or a blackboard uh, to develop the work breakdown structure. Uh, that has the advantage of being able to be moved around as the various work items tasks are discussed and then as the WBS is developed so that when we do this exercise in a class or a workshop um, we often will use uh, these sticky notes. Next, a WBS from a previous project can be used as a template project since some w projects re will resemble a previous project to some extent. So don't be afraid to use the examples that you have from other projects. You don't necessarily have to be original. That a lot of the tasks, a lot of the work packages are somewhat repetitive and so you can learn from experience. 
And finally, don't try to organize the activities into logical levels for second, third, fourth, fifth, until exhaustive brainstorming of the, all the activities has been done, uh, and including the subactivities. I think this is useful because if you start to talk about the logical connection between the activities, sometimes that stifles the creativity and you miss out on some of those details. You may or may not know the answer to this question, but let me ask, what is a PERT chart? A PERT chart is a tool for making a network diagram. It's a specific project management tool that's used to schedule organize and coordinate tasks within a project. And if you're interested in what it stands for, it's Program Evaluation Review Technique. And the methodology for PERT was developed by the United States military, the Navy, in the 1950s to manage a submarine missile program. So you can use PERT chart as a synonym for network diagram. I don't believe we covered that in the PMD Pro 1 course, but it's an interesting addition. PERT is a graphic illustration of the project as a network diagram. And here are the components of PERT, and they're the same as what you looked at in the PMD Pro 1 course. First of all, there are numbered nodes either circles or rectangles that represent events. Secondly, there are milestones in the project linked by labeled vectors or directional lines. Then there are the direction of the arrows on the lines indicates the sequence of the task and task that must be completed are in sequence. And then there are dependent and parallel task. Let's take a look at the PERT example below on filling a vacancy, the same one that I showed you in the WBS. So study the diagram below and determine the number of pathways that are in this diagram. A pathway is the journey from the start to the finish. So this is an obvious pathway on top here. And then here you have two pathways. This one goes up there and then comes to the end. This one starts there, goes down, and then comes to the end there. Path number four then would go this way. And the final path is down at the bottom. So you have five paths that you're looking at there. You, so you have the, the nodes that represent the events. You've got the milestones um, linked by these labeled vectors, these lines. You've got the arrows that show directionality. This particular one doesn't show arrows, it just shows lines, but the intention is the same. And you can see that these activities and tasks must be completed in sequence and you have dependent task. In other words, this task, agree on the format, can't be done until you establish the need. So it has a dependency. And then you have parallel task. So these three tasks, agreeing on the format, the job description, and setting the target date, are not dependent on one another and can be done simultaneously or in parallel. So in review, rectangles are nodes that represent task. Horizontal lines or arrows represent dependent tasks that must be completed sequentially. And then vertical lines indicate possible concurrent tasks. Now I'd like all of you to do an exercise to practice what I've been talking about. I'd like you to list all the activities and work related to conducting a half-day workshop. So basically, construct 
a WBS with all the details, all the work that needs to be done. On the screen in front of you, you'll see the results of a brainstorming process. There's a listing of many of the activities that would need to be done as part of planning and implementing a half-day workshop. Now there could be many more and I'm sure that some of you who did this exercise have additional ones to add to what's on the screen, but I'll use what's up here as the building blocks for the WBS and the PERT chart. So here's what the WBS might look like when you take those activities that were on the previous slide and put them into a hierarchy with levels so that you might have arranging for the facilitator, participants, and the venue and equipment as the highest level work packages. And then under each of these, you would have the work that's involved in accomplishing uh, those higher level tasks. And under each of these, if you wanted to keep going, you could develop a lot more detail. Then you'll take that content and you'll put it into the a sequenced arrangement that we were talking about that's called a network diagram or a PERT chart. What I'd like you to do now is to study this particular diagram and I've hidden all of the arrows. What I'd like you to do is to draw the missing lines and arrows showing the dependent and the concurrent task on this network diagram. You have pathways here, you have one pathway there, you have a second pathway here, and you have a third pathway there. Each pathway has dependencies, tasks that must be done in sequence, and then you'll see that amongst the three pathways, as represented by the vertical lines, you'll have some parallel tasks that can be done concurrently. Finally, I'd like to ask you this question of application and learning transfer. How will you use the work breakdown structure and PERT network diagram to improve your project management? I trust that this module on WBS and PERT charts has been useful. If you still have questions, please try to find someone who can help answer those questions.